What is going on, everybody? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. It is another Thursday night around the globe and around the world and around the sports card hobby. Sports card radio is sitting around watching influencers get checks, get companies like CGC or SGC getting checks as well. But unfortunately, for super producer Tim in the background, the check didn't come in this week for sports card or radio. We must have missed the email from other sports card influencers that are out there buying hobby accounts. Must have missed the Kevin O'Leary email. We must have missed the Michael Rubin email. We must have missed the email from collectors. And that means... Good news for everybody joining us around the world on this Thursday night. Because until we get that buyout offer here at Sports Card Radio that we're anticipating coming in any day now, multi million dollar offer to buy out Sports Card Radio, take us off the airways. Because there's a lot of people in this hobby, folks, that want to be your friend, that want to like, that want you to follow them that wants you to retweet their contest, might even want you to bet on a baseball game or two. There's a lot of people in this hobby that want you to buy into their break, buy into their grift. But here at Sports Card Radio, we just want you to know the truth about this hobby. We are live again on Thursday, March 21st. 
And we are joined as usual. Super producer Tim in the background, still clocking in, waiting for that buyout. I'm sure he was, he saw that news about collectible guru, Ryan, and he, he thought maybe we were next, but unfortunately that call has not come in. They'd rather give their checks to influencers that are here today and gone tomorrow where sports card radio is the longest running independently owned, not bought out sports trading card platform on the internet. Not only the longest running, but the most lawsuits threatened the most talked about in separate lawsuits. How many times Ryan, we've been mentioned in lawsuits. We've been called to the witness stand in upper deck versus leaf. We are blocked by at least a dozen hobby heroes, including Tom Fish, who was seen this week with Mr. Kevin O'Leary and their snow dealer. Those Miami white pants and that auto RPA watch would play well in Miami. And we have got new money flowing into this hop. We're just awaiting that buyout offer here at Sports card radio until it comes in we'll be joining you every thursday night live around the country and as always we are joined by none other than ryan ryan that was a six minute intro might have set a record how are we doing tonight well maybe we'll get paid by the minutes where, where we'll be on so like you know i don't know what eric whiteback got for his twitter account but maybe we'll get paid for you know minutes per per, ep per episode so good idea just yeah chat away but we got a lot i mean gosh we got a lot of things to talk about speaking about talking on a podcast i saw david bousquet in the chat said that michael rubin why is he with one of your girlfriends you know which one which one of your girlfriend take your pick one two or three there i okay, guess okay, let's, let's just solve that right now right okay we got one two three skip mr rubin one two or three which one are you going for two i mean yeah that just looks so clean. I mean, we've got the best angle of her, but boy, she looks number two looking good tonight. Ryan, yeah. why don't you tell everybody what we've got topic wise? We've got a lot of topics to get to. What are we going to be talking about on this Thursday night? Got a bunch of things. Got big stories in the sports world. Obviously, Shohei Otani, one of the golden boys of the MLB. He got caught up in some drama. We'll talk about it from the card angle. We were kind of on the air when the Wander Franco news dropped. And we advised you in the summer to sell, sell, sell. That advice turned out to be pretty good advice because his cards have continued to decline since he got caught up in his Chris Hansen moment. So we'll talk about Shohei Otani, the implications there, and maybe some other famous betters in the sports card world. We'll talk about white back, but we I got a lot of little things that we can talk about. We're on the eve of our sports card show. We will be at the Cow Palace in San Francisco, California. Tomorrow through Sunday, 400 plus tables will be set up next to Auburn Sports Card Show. Guys, no excuses. Get your bulletproof vest on. Get your rainbow flags. Come on down to San Francisco <laughs> and uh, come hang out. So welcome, everybody. Again, lots to talk about. Bob Boozle in the chat. Rick Galvez in the chat. This the breaks. BP Barty. Phoenix Rising. What's up? Good to see you guys. Bob Bousquet. Like I said, I got number two. You can have one or three. We have a t-shirt coming out in a couple of weeks. This is going to be me like trying to buy some Pearl Jam tickets, dude. This is going to be like, I'm just hitting refresh when this goes live. We got Dr. Collectible and the meme God teaming up on a, I guess this is like a meme shirt. Going to tell my kids this was Dr. Collectible. Look like it's maybe like LL Cool J right there. So two weeks, maybe like a week and a half now. So I'm going to have to be on there. Click and refresh 25 bucks. Proceeds go to St. Jude's. You'll know that Dr. Collectible famously has a tops card coming out in the big league set. Keep an eye out for that. But I did want to get your reaction. Obviously, we have been making content on the internet for a long, long time. And goddamn, 
It's too bad we weren't making videos when me and Tom Fish had a confrontation at the Arizona casino. When I walked by his table at the national and asked them who hacked his website. Yeah, that would have made for good content. He's the man on the left, owner of Blowout Sports Cards. I remember being at the transcendent parties and people would come up to me and be like, dude, Tom Fish is just staring you down. And I'm like, bro, if he ain't a chick, I don't, he can keep staring because I don't give a fuck. He's here with Mr. Shark Tank himself, Kevin O'Leary. And I don't know what to call this guy. I mean, I think you said it right. Cocaine dealer, kind of, kind of literally and figuratively. The white pants. How much does that watch? I mean, I I don't know. It looks like a good one, though. So we got we got Tom Fish, who we've had battles with like in person, too. He's like approached me. God, those are fun times. Kevin O'Leary. I mean, we've got the, you know, the, the hair club for men's guys here. None of them have any hair. We've got an expensive watch. We've got a cocaine dealer. What do you think about this picture here with <laughs> three guys getting together? Yeah, definitely follically challenged, uh, three follically challenged individuals, um, but looking good nonetheless. Kevin O'Leary looks like he's lost some weight, looking good. Uh, the guy on the right, we probably know why he's. Uh, nice and skinny. Uh, yeah. And last time I was at the uh, tops party, I had not seen an updated photo of Tom fish. We had one on our website where he was probably maybe 10 years younger and I'm standing there. It's at the tops party, the initial, the first thing that you kind of do. So that's the photo that I had seen. And so like, I, I think he, I anticipated him looking like this. So I'm at the tops party. We're having drinks there. You know, it's like right after COVID. So everybody's having a really good time and I'm out there. And yeah, this guy is just staring me down. I don't know who he is. I, like, cause I, I had not seen an updated photo of him in, in 10 years or so. And so he's staring me down, staring me down. And, and finally I'm like, oh yeah, I think that that looks like the blow blowout guy. He has these kind of Coke bottle glasses. And then later in the later in the event, we're kind of just standing out in the like kind of a courtyard area. And we're just I'm standing in a group of four or five people and we're just chit chatting. And he kind of walks by. And then as he walks by me, he kind of like, I don't know, it's weird. He kind of turned his back. He definitely like did something and everybody in the group kind of noticed. And I was just like. I don't even you know, like, I don't even know what to say. I, I don't even know what to say. He passively aggressive tried to pull up on sports card radio. Uh, needless to say, uh, it did not work. His well, website has gotten hacked, but it looks like he's made a couple of buddies in Mr. O'Leary. And what's the other guy? Mr. Shine. I mean, does the guy have a name or does it just shine? Do we know? Does he have a real name or on his police record? It does say his real name, but oh, I, okay. I, I don't, I don't have that handy. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's true. We do. We do have a police. He does have a police record. So, uh, fair well, enough. Guess what? What do you think his police records for? I'll give you, I'll give you I'm, one. I'm guess. assuming it's some kind of trafficking of some material. <laughs> so that's probably the same color as his pants is what I'm, I'm presuming. So, uh, so yeah. So yeah, yeah I mean, Hey, the, the interesting times happening in the hobby. The last time we had these kind of like grifter kind of investor guys come through, it was Vegas Dave who kind of, I don't think he's at the status of Kevin O'Leary, but maybe from a social media standpoint, but when, look, when, when you have these guys come through the Kevin O'Leary's are starting to come, starting to peak up, maybe some other uh, examples of this. I think it's time to sell guys. It's time to start being a seller in this market. When you have these guys start to poke around, I mean, it may be more upside is coming. I wouldn't just unload my entire collection, but uh, when these guys start poking around and maybe that's what Tom fish is doing, maybe he's poking, maybe he sold a, sold a stake in blowout, which I think would be wise. We saw our boy, Brian gray cashed out. That's why I'm wondering like, when are we going to get cashed out? Brian gray getting cashed out. Look like our boy, Tom fish getting cashed out. Our boy collectible guru getting cashed out. None of these guys have half the platform of sports car radio. That's why I couldn't believe I, I, I checked my text messages, my emails this week. Just nothing came through shockingly that, that we didn't get that buyout offer. So must be coming soon. Maybe, maybe everybody has to 
like get a bank loan in order to to fund the sports card radio one. Maybe Fanatics has got to go public and get some of that public equity money in order to make its offer because I didn't see that come through either. Here's a question for you, Ryan. Would you take number two yes. solo? Yes. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> the answer is probably yes to both of this. Would you take two solo or one and three in tandem? Are we, are you well, are we talking option? one night? Are we talking one night or what are we talking well, about? Yeah. Here? I mean, I, I don't for know. For sports card I, radio? For a sport, I was, I was like a weekend with number two for sports card radio. I'd be like, sure. Sold. Bye. <laughs> a weekend. Okay. Whatever the time frame, it's either you get that time frame with number two and that's it. Okay. Or you get one and three as a tandem. It, it's it's hard to go. It's hard to go wrong there. It's hard true. to go wrong. It's, it's really, true. you know, you. It's probably like when shine pulls up and then he opens up his briefcase and it's got some baseball cards and it has some other stuff in there. It's hard to hard to go wrong, I guess. <laughs> you know which side I'm picking from. Okay, fair enough. Well, fair enough. here's here's the funny thing. Like you had your little run in with Tom Fish, so yeah, I was at the Tops little industry summit or whatever this was. This was all before the sports card boom, and I just went out and smoked out in the parking lot in the Tesla, and I come back in, and I'm fucking like baked out of my mind, kind of like noticeably like, whoo, I'm kind of a little high walking through the casino. And so I walk upstairs and there's nobody up in this like upstairs area. And here comes Tom Fish sauntering. And there we just walk somewhere on a security footage. There's just me and him walking toward each other. So I'm started. I just start to chuckle a little bit because I'm like, oh, I'm high as fuck. And he's like, why don't you why don't you talk about the other websites that got hacked? Why don't you ever write about all the other websites that got hacked? And I was like, which ones? Tom, which ones? He's like, you never write about the other. And I was like, which ones, bro? You could be a source right now. And he just kept walking. And, so that's Tom Fish for you. So he's still he's still livid, still burning all these years later. This is like a seven year old article that I just began actually promoting on Twitter again, just for the hell of it, just because uh, <laughs> we're spiteful. But we'll get into Mr. Speaking of big bats, we'll get into Mr. Otani in a little bit. Again, we talked about when Otani got into his Chris Hansen moment to sell his cards. I kind of want you to be thinking about should you be selling Otani right now? I mean, he's got Whoa. expensive ass cards, but just keep that keep that in the back of your mind. Somebody sent this to me, the notorious H O G, better known as at CLD Hog on Twitter. He says cleaning booths open for business at the Dallas card show, which was this past weekend. Not even hiding it anymore. Yeah. And I think I've seen these before. Uh striving Kurt. for 10 and the minty and Kurt. What do you think yeah. about the cleaners kind of out in the open? Um, I've heard this. I've heard that yeah, somebody uh, I can't remember. Maybe it was the sports car dad, maybe it was somebody that went to a show. I can't remember that was reporting back. And yeah, they said that there was like three or four of these booths just set up. Wouldn't surprise me. We're gonna be at that uh Cow Palace San Francisco Daily City show uh, tomorrow. Honestly, wouldn't surprise me that there's someone there rubbing down the cards. So, you know, that that's the hobby we live in now, that it's just right out there in the open. And and like we said, I think we went on for about an hour last week. PSA gave you the green light to do this. PSA gave you the green light. So they can't detect it or they, they, they don't want to detect it because believe me, guys, they can detect it. There are th there's something called too good to be true. And when these prism cards are coming out and it basically looks like you could slide a, a baby's bottom off of it. Come on. We, we all know what, what happened to that card before it was submitted. And they don't care if you're wiping it with a microfiber cloth or some of Kurt's juice. They don't care. They really don't care. So yeah, out in the open and uh, yeah, we'll see how uh, my guess is that this business will turn into like the grading business there's a lot of businesses that popped up during the pandemic. A lot of card price guides and things like that. Card slabs and all this different stuff. It'll all fade away. And there will be maybe one or two guys that stick around for a long period of time. But yeah, it's out in the open now. 
and no surprise at the Dallas card show, which is kind of like one of those sports card bro type card shows where 19 different graders are there and, and people are wondering which one they should go with. So. Yeah. I had a fun experience going to that uh, card show kind of, kind of opened my eyes to the new wave of people who had come into the hobby yeah. since the pandemic, but want to show you this, this came in, gosh, this is like an hour ago. Our buddies over at LMS box breaks, they were opening a box of impeccable football the other night. And this is what came inside. It looks like the tape was stuck to the pack. It looks like the pack got open, but the tape is like stuck to it. It's over the autograph. What do you Ooh. think about the uh, quality control over at uh, <laughs> Panini America these days? No, although I think Fanatics prints these. I don't know if these they print these particular cards, but I think Fanatics is, owns the printer now that prints most of these sports cards. What do you think? Is this ambush from Michael Rubin? Is this just... Uh, Honestly, I got to feel like some, I don't know about this case, this scenario. I think some of these higher end cards are manufactured at an offsite facility that does kind of smaller batches. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but uh, to me, this looks very odd. I've never seen anything like this. I, thank God it's painter's tape, although it is over the autograph. So you have to wonder uh, when, and if you do peel that painter's tape off, what will happen if there was no autograph on there? I got to imagine the painter's tape. I mean, shoot, that could be a, a card cleaning technique. Is you get some painter's tape and you and you roll it out and then you just pull it off. Uh, it'd be like a lint brush almost. So yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, but I, I gotta imagine some of this, certainly the delays that Panini has had, but some of the mess ups that they've had, man, you have to imagine that that some of that is just due to due to either sabotage or just plain laziness on the manufacturer part where they know who pays their bills, and so they'll take care of fanatics in a major way. Although we've seen mistakes there, the first card one on one promos and other, and the co I think the cosmic chromes not making any of the packs and things like that. A lot of mistakes. This one on the higher end of discuss because what'd you say? This was impeccable or in immaculate or one of those sets. Um, yeah, impeccable. I don't know what a box of impeccable costs, but it sounds expensive. So. Uh, Certainly would not be excited about uh, opening this. Um, and, and we hope the customer is, is taken care of in this scenario. I hope the card doesn't have a lot of damage. And if it does, we hope the customer is taken care of. Kurt can fix it up. Yeah. Kurt uh, yeah. Can fix that. Just send it right over to PSA Kurt, 10. guys. PSA 10. Guaranteed. And, and you could give the shout out in the office. So, yeah. So I thought that was product interesting. Is amazing. <laughs> product is amazing. Something, something to be aware of out there. I saw this as well. This uh, was making the way around the Pokemon community, but it, it applies to sports cards as well. We've seen this type of thing. And if sports cards gets hotter, you might see something similar to this. Uh, I guess they, these people call themselves Master Rat and Little Rat brought the house down. And they show themselves flexing, going to Costco and buying out all the Pokemon stuff. What do you, what are you, my thoughts are, I, I don't have a people, a problem going to Target, Walmart and Costco buying whatever they want. When you flex about it, especially when it's for resale, I think it, you know, just comes down to the look. What do you think about buying, going to Costco and flexing about your Pokemon or sports card purchases? I mean, yeah. I'll be I'll be honest with you. I don't mind. I, I don't mind it one way or another. I, I don't mind it one way or another because this while this product might be hot at the moment, I don't know a whole lot about Pokemon. My son's gotten into it. I bought some Pokemon cards, things like that. He instantly wants to sell them to me so he can go buy more. Uh, and so I, I don't got a problem with it. it. This is Costco's business model anyways. Like they they want you to come in and buy everything. Uh, you know what I mean? Like th it's kind of Costco's business model. They don't mind if you're reselling. In fact, they, they have membership plans. I think that cater to resellers and flippers. I don't mind it. If you want to flex about it, that's fine. It's a form of content. Um, and, and those types of things. And if look, if they are buying these for, let's say $25 and, and the going rate online is 45 or 50, have at it. Have at it. That's a lot of money to sink into one inventory item. 
So you better hope the price holds. You, I've certainly. I mean, that's the margin. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I watched a couple of videos this last week on Pokemon resellers. There's certainly a market out there for it. Certainly, if you know the market and you're able to to get something like that, I tell you what, if that's a hot product, that's you you go through that in about three days. So it's, it's not even like that big of a flex. You know, um, if you got yeah, pallets, I, I think they're just screwing themselves. I mean, I mean, to me, it's not that big of a flex. That's not that much stuff. Like that barely fills up the back of a Tesla. You know, when you when you got the UPS driver showing yeah. up and he's tired after he drops your stuff off, that's when you know you've ordered a ton of he's stuff. Mad. Uh yeah, or okay. or yeah, you have to rent warehouse space or office space. This is this is a side hustle. And it is what it is. I, I don't have a problem with it. I actually don't have a problem with the people that go to Target and they're like, oh, I bought every blaster of Prism. And, and people are like, oh, you should have saved some for the kids. They're lying. Those people are lying. They want you to save it for them or save it for the next middle-aged man that's going to go there and buy that stuff. Kids don't go. Like, I have kids. They don't go to Target to buy a blaster. They're not going to Target to buy a blaster. And if you they do... You go to HQ. Yeah, exactly. But if they do go to Target to buy a blaster, they really don't care if it's Prism or if it's Score or if it's an Upper Deck product or it's one of these repackaged or it's Leaf. They really don't care. Okay. They really don't care. When my kid's buying Pokemon, he doesn't care. He might see Char, there might be a Charizard card there as kind of the teaser card or whatever. And that gets them excited. Everything else doesn't matter, okay? I mean, if you have like a 12-year-old, 9-year-old that's going to Target and, and is like, I, I need Prism. I need 2023 Prism. And if I don't get it, Dad, I'm going to be pissed. Now, he's going to have a shine problem here in about six years. He's going to turn 18, and instead of Prism getting them off, it's going to be something else. So I, I really don't I don't think kids are going to these these retail outlets looking for one specific product. And if it's not there, oh, they're they're totally bummed. Yeah, I, I just and want you, these people to get involved in the sports card world so I can make a video about Master Rat and Little Rat. I mean, that those the, I mean, that's kind of what drew me into the story. So be great. That'd be content gold. So maybe there's some sports cards over here in this shop and I can eventually. uh Talk about them and their squish mellows. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, whatever it was, the parent company of PSA collectors uh, purchased SGC, and then so you know, kind of married the two biggest graders at the time, two of the biggest. PSA probably has like eighty percent, eighty, ninety percent market share in the grading business. Well, that has allowed them to raise maybe maybe has allowed them to raise the price of their collective collector club starting on 420 baby you can smoke a joint and pay 50 dollars more for the collector club now it does get you some break credit apparently with fanatics live i think that raised some eyebrows with some people or there michael rubin and nat turner getting in bed like p diddy and some famous rappers but what is your thoughts about PSA raising the price of the collector club, not one, not two, not three, but $50 and partnering with fanatics. Does this move the needle for you at all? Well, it goes right along with you consolidate the business. You go buy SGC and now you jack up the price. It's great. This is, this is uh business one oh one. consolidate the business, jack up the price. I mean, that's what fanatics is going to be doing. Once uh, all the licenses hit their, uh, their product lines, it, it's gonna be the it's gonna be the same thing. It's gonna be instead of 24 packs, now you're gonna get 20. Instead of eight cards per pack, now you're gonna get six. And it's just gonna be that time and time and time again. You're gonna constantly get squeezed and you're gonna get less and less value. Now they're saying you're gonna get some fanatics cred. Fanatics live is gonna give you $125 credit, it looks like coming soon for all new and renewing and existing members. So it, it's, a, but that's, that's to me, that's kind of like I show up at the MGM, I get the room. I'm happy, you know, and then they give me some food and beverage credit or they give me some slot dollars. 
That's all this is. It's a little bonus on the top. Not everybody's going to use it, and that is subsidized by Fanatics. Eventually, they'll pull the rug on that. And what are you going to get for your 149? But this is this is business 101. They consolidated the business. Now it's time to jack up the price. In a year or two, I I don't even think the SGC brand is is around anymore. These wow. kind of mergers happen. These mergers happen all the time, where it's oh we're going to acquire the company and we're going to keep it. We're going to keep it around. It, it, wow. it, in a year or two, that's gone. In a year or two, it's just gone. Because if you're an SGC fanboy, what's left? What's left to hold on to anymore? What's left to hold on to anymore? What's holding you back from just sending it to PSA? Why wouldn't you send it to PSA? Doesn't really make a lot of sense. Seems like a lot of collectors are coming to that conclusion anyways. And the fact that you can read Kurt's card care jizz all over your cards and PSA can't tell. Seems to me that's the place to go these days. Get the Kurt's card care jizz, rub it on your card, send it to PSA. The PSA 10s and 9s are worth more than BGS SGC 9s. The price is about the same. Let's be honest with you. A couple dollars a card, even four or five dollars a card is really not that big of a deal when the tens and nines sell for several multiples more than the other brands. So yeah, raise the price a year from now, the SGC brand, it, it'll be gone. It'll be gone. Just be PSA happens all the time. They acquire these companies. They say, Oh, we're going to keep it separate. We're going to do this, that, and the other. And a year from now it's gone. I mean, Google and Google's like famous for that. There's a couple other brands out there that are just famous for, oh yeah, we're going to buy it and keep it separate. And a year from now, it's all wrapped up into one. So, wow. Interesting. Yeah. We'll talk about in, in a little bit here. I want to ask you about CGC and JSA, the autograph authentication company coming together, but one of, do you want to talk about white back or you want to talk about Otani first? I'm going to let you pick. I think let's go to Otani because it's a, it's a really big story. If this spirals out of control, this will um, obviously impact not only Major League Baseball on the field, but also just the, I mean, this is the hobby golden boy at the moment, right? Yeah. I mean, is, is there other than, you know, like I think Jackson holidays up and coming and you have other Dominguez. players like Aaron judge who, who, who's consistently has solid results and, and it plays on a great team. There's other players out there, obviously, there's a team that ultimately wins the World Series. But in terms of star power, in, in terms of just raw horsepower from a star power, and also just there's not a lot of guys in this hobby where you pull their – Otani's got to be like in his fourth year, fifth year in the MLB. Has it been that long? Maybe 2018 maybe rookie. 2018 so, yeah, rookie. it's been – been what well, I, I can't do math, but that's been five, six years now. Like there's not that many people – in the MLB where you pull his fifth or sixth year autograph card and it's worth some good money. Like his cards are worth uh, kind of what trouts were kind of, you know, sixth, seventh year trout autographs could be a case hit. Doesn't have to be a rookie. So he he's definitely moved ahead. I'd say he's ahead of Mookie Betts in terms of collectability. He's ahead of Aaron judge in terms of collectability. He's ahead of pretty much everybody. And we've got an Otani card. So pretty much everybody in this hobby is into this working out one way or another. And I tell you what, if the hobby gets drained out of Otani, that's a one-two punch. You had Wander Franco. How many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably millions of dollars was invested in Wander Franco. We'll put that in air quotes. Invested in Wander Franco. Now, Wander Frank, and we said this right when this happened. We were like, you are going to go to dollar bins, and there are going to be Wander Franco cards in there that were one four or five figure cards that'll be in the dollar bin. And there were programs out there. We won't name who they are. But they were like, oh, you should be buying a sports cards nonsense. But that we, you know, there were programs out there that people listen to and think uh, know a lot about this hobby. We're like, oh, I think Wander Franco's a buying opportunity. No, Wander Franco is not a buying opportunity. With Otani, we'll see what happens here. But this could really, really, really spiral out of control. Why don't you fill everybody in with what you think about the Otani situation? 
Well, I would definitely go to your trusted MLB news source for this. Um, but the, I mean, the gist of the matter is, is this little trainer over here uh, apparently racked up about $4.5 million in sports gambling debts to a Ooh. Southern California bookie who is being investigated by the FBI. And apparently the they were paying the guy, the bookie in Southern California, who's now ratting people out apparently, in $500,000 increments from Otani's bank account. And now there has been conflicting stories from the little trainer over here about what happened and who knew what. And now the Dodgers have tried to get out in front of this and say they fired him. But, I mean, gambling obviously is a very big touch point for MLB. Anybody who's old enough to remember the Pete Rose saga and him being banned from the baseball and being, you know, not in the Hall of Fame and so on and so forth knows what a big deal it is. So this is as big as guys back in the day who were injecting themselves with some needles and pumping themselves up. Boy, somebody get me one of them needles, to be perfectly honest. This is a this could be a big, big, big story. Now, I asked the question. We were on here when the Wander Franco Chris Hansen stuff broke, and we were like, sell, 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 sell now. Guys, get out, get out. Now, fire's hot. Get out of the house. And you can see that his stuff doesn't even get bids anymore. And his some of his nicer cards that were worth thousands are quite literally worth like 50 bucks, maybe. So his stuff is literally, I mean, obviously off the face of the planet because nobody's sure if he's going to be playing prison baseball or, <laughs> you know, that'll be his only option. With Otani, am I bidding? Am I having to put a bid that'll cr crank this card up to $11,500? Probably not. But again, I wasn't in the market for these types of cards anyways. To me, it's not as fire hot situation as Wander Franco when you should have just been clicking sell, 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 get out. It's Chris Hansen. Chris Hansen showed up like it's over. Whereas with Otani, he is the golden boy of the MLB. They probably are going to try to cover this up. Hope that the opening day, the real opening day that happens in the next whatever week or two will kind of push this story into the background and maybe you can get by this story that some of it was lost in translation 4.5 is a lot of money the fbi investigating is bad for baseball because they ain't going to care about otani they may want to bust this guy now yeah that's the one thing that concerns me if baseball was the only one investigating this would all get swept under the rug the fact that the fbi is investigating boy it's a, it's a san francisco giants fan investigating he may want to put otani on the front page and and make him out to be worse than Pete Rose. What do you I so again, I don't think it's a sell situation, but it's certainly a story that I would be following very very closely. What are your thoughts about Otani and his cards? Yeah, we'll see if this is more of a speed bump or if this is a complete roadblock in terms of his collectability. Um I I don't think it completely derails it like Wander Franco, you know, Wander Franco's career of very very right off the bat basically seemed like it was um, over basically, um, you know, maybe he meanders his way back into the league, but he might be 30 by then and nobody will care. Um, Otani's a different situation. Like you said, you got the FBI investigating my, my, uh, my only assumption is I, I don't know his citizenship, you know, I mean, I know he's here playing baseball, but I don't think he's an American citizen. And so I think that complicates the matter as well. If you, the, the FBI you know, in in these situations, might might even look on it differently in that, and maybe not in Otani's favor. In that case, uh, if he was some American hero, he might it might be treated a little bit differently. But he's not an American hero; he's a, a hero in his in his own country. Uh, with the FBI investigating that, this is not this is not good. This is this is really really not good, and you have to imagine. Rotani has some involvement in this because this has got to be one of his one of his guys. This has got to be a guy that he has routine communication with, text me text message, emails, constant communication with. You got to imagine his his interpreter is is his right hand man in a lot of ways. So 
And where was he getting millions and millions of dollars? You know, so th- th- to me, this this doesn't. And if you were Otani and you wanted to bet, if you were Otani and you wanted to gamble and you wanted to place bets, who would you give your millions of dollars to to bet? Seems to me your interpreter would be pretty high on the list. Of who and, and and maybe maybe I don't know enough about this situation, but seems to me an interpreter dusting off four point five milli. That's pretty tough. I, I doubt that's his salary. I doubt that's what he's making. So, yeah. uh, but to, to Otani, four point five million is is basically nothing. So it's a complicated situation. You have the I, I believe opening day is a week from now. And so a very exciting, I'm extraordinarily excited for that, but this definitely puts a cloud over the hobby. Definitely puts, you had one of the brightest young stars that the hobby anointed as the number one prospect, Wander Franco gone, literally gone, wiped off the face of the hobby. And if Otani has at, at the very least a stain on his record that materializes potentially into a, much larger situation. This is not good for baseball card sets in 2020. What are we? 2024 or 25 or 2024? 24. So yeah, it's, it's a tricky situation and I certainly wouldn't be an incremental buyer of his cards right now until you figure out what's going to happen here. At the very least, I think you have a, 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 an asterisk onto his record and you start to question like, if he was involved in this gambling ring or even partly involved in it, definitely makes you wonder about his choices in life. Same thing happened to like Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods was like a god right up there with like Jordan. And then he had many missteps over time. I wouldn't even think the one with his wife the, uh, was one of them, but then he got a DUI and you know, you started seeing misstep after misstep with Tiger, and his stuff is still obviously very collectible and still sells for a lot. There was a couple of items in the lead auction uh, that's running, I think, a golden. It's like 10 days from now, nine days from now, or something like that, that I was checking out. And I just bought a Tiger Woods card for like 400 bucks with Arnold Palmer on it. Um, so his stuff still sells. And so you can have these, you can have it, it depends on what it is. This to me compared to Wander Franco is a nothing burger. Okay. Like what Wander Franco got caught up in was, is literally like the worst thing that, cause there's only a handful of idiots in this hobby that immediately stood up for Wander Franco. And we won't some. say who they are, but they're, you know, you guys know who they are. Some of them may have appeared on the show and dusted off a million dollars on an app, but. You know, the, the other than that, most people saw this for what it was and was like, wow, I got to get out of this guy. So it, it's troubling for baseball. It's troubling for athletics that these stars can get up to high prominence and something like this can happen. I think it just uh, reinforces our strategy. We've bought, we've spent, uh, you know, five figures in the last year on Kobe. It would be it'd be hard, Ryan, for Kobe to run into any more problems uh, in his life. It would be. <laughs> um, and we've spent money on Joe Montana, who certainly could run into some problems in his life. But at the current time, his cards are so cheap that it it, it doesn't matter. So yeah, it's it's a tough situation, and we'll see where this where this one goes. But with the FBI investigating, I'm I'm concerned. I'm concerned. This could be like just the start of a forest fire. Right now, it's it's it, the fire's out of control a little bit. It's outside of the the fire pit that you've created. It hasn't materialized into a full blown forest fire. But boy, I tell you what, we could be sitting here next Thursday, opening day of baseball, and a tiny might not be playing. That that's wow. conceivably something that could happen over the next week. And that obviously would be explosive news to the hobby. I think this also underscores, you know, we've seen posts. Oh, I had, I had a bunch of invest in Kenny Pickett. I had a bunch of money invested in Mac Jones. Mac I Jones. had a bunch invested in this guy or that guy. 
maybe don't go overweight on a guy. You know what I mean? Like it, it, the same thing happens in the stock market. I got all my money in NVIDIA. Well, it's great. But NVIDIA is doing great. But one day NVIDIA is not going to do great. Or Tesla. And and maybe being a little more diversified, spreading your spreading your wealth out a little bit. Tell you what, you know who's sitting a little pretty right now? You know who dodged a bullet? Is Mr. Hobby Hero himself. Oh, that's right. Jeff Wilson was on the hook for 100K. Buying Otani for 100K. That was turned from a 9 into a 9.5. And he dodged a bullet there because that card probably ain't worth a hundred anymore. Or at least you'll have people think it twice until that gets cleared out. Could end up being a nothing burger, like I said. But boy, right now we are on a teeter-totter. It's either going to turn into kind of a nothing burger, and this time next year we're not even going to—we're barely going to remember it. Or a week from now, Otani won't even be playing, and that'll be a big problem. That'll be a big, big, big problem. And as a San Francisco Giants fan, I hope it's the latter. I hope this guy is done and cooked and arrested and ushered into. I tell you what, if he was a Trump supporter, he'd be already be in jail, but we won't. Won't have to go that route. Yeah, exactly. I'm I, like, like you said, this could be a nothing burger in a week, or this could be the biggest story in sports in a long, long time. I mean, Michael Jordan faced gambling allegations. I mean, he was went to Atlantic City, I think, with his pops during the NBA finals or during the playoffs. And then he famously did an interview with Ahmad Rashad with sunglasses on to kind of refute that he had a gambling problem. So we, we and, and obviously Jordan kind of bounced back from any kind of uh, gambling uh, allegations or whatever since then. So this is a little weird. I mean, when you read through this and the money came from Otani and Ota how does Otani know the bookie? Like how, how did Otani even fucking, you know, how, how did Otani, you know, have this guy's, how was Otani even able to wire the guy the money? So if Otani's involved in any kind of way, man, you guys, not you guys, but the baseball world and the media persecuted Barry Lamar Bonds. My goodness, you tore to shreds, Pete Rose. Pete Rose. Yeah. Tore to shreds, Pete Rose. You let this Japanese guy come in here and just claim, oh, I don't know the language, but I paid a bookie $4.5 million. It's not going to go over well with a couple of Giants fans. So we'll certainly be you know, in tune to this. So your thoughts are, this isn't as bad as Wander Franco. So you're not actively buying these cards, but I remember when Wander Franco happened, we were like, sell, 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 sell. As he went to take another dip into the alcoholic beverage. That's what I need. My back is hurting so bad that right now I need an alcoholic beverage. I need the Thank strongest you. prescription pills uh, you can buy. I need uh, the best so narcotics available in Oregon. I would lighten the load if I had 30 If you had Otani, what would you do? Otani, I'm I'm light I, I'm lighting the load. Uh, I'm I'm you know what I mean? It's like if you have if you have a portfolio of $50,000 and 30,000 of it is in Tesla and then Elon Musk says some crazy shit or the cars ain't selling or whatever, there's a fire in the German facility. Like, you'd be crazy not to sell a couple shares. And you're probably in the money on a lot of these Otanis, too. Like, to me, I'd lighten the load a little bit because at the very least, this is a stain on his record. And this has people looking at him in a completely different light. I don't think he's pitching, right? I think he's just hitting, Correct. which he's fantastic at. I'm not saying that just as a hitter, he's not a great player. He's a fantastic player, one of the tops in the league just as a hitter. But if this lingers on, and spirals out of control. This this card right here, that's what, 11, 12,000 bucks after premium? Ooh, that's a four thousand dollar card next week. So I would not yeah, want to I, I would not want to I would not want to sit around and watch that happen. So I, I don't know how easy it is to unload these cards, but it would be ideal if you can sell and lighten your load a lot. Again, this is this is for the people that are quote overweight i'm not talking about from a physical standpoint but if you've got a collection of 100 cards and 80 of them are otani i'm 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 lightening the load a little bit just to protect myself because imagine all these guys with wanders 
I mean, can you imagine, Ryan? There's guys out there that that dusted off five figures, six figures onto Wanders, and now we're sitting here with nothing. With nothing. With nothing. I mean, same with Volpe. I mean, I mean, there just the list goes on and on. Even Trout. Even Trout. If you bought Trout at the height, you're down fucking probably eighty percent. I mean, you bought anybody Volpe, at the height. You're... So yeah, I'm, I'm 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 concerned. I'm concerned. Mr. Whiteback. Ooh. Speaking, hey, you know, speaking of not concerned, Mr. Whiteback, one of the most popular Twitter accounts on for sports cards on Twitter. I think he had a 150,000 subscribers, which is big for sports cards, but maybe not massive in other areas. Well, he had an announcement today, and I guess this isn't an April Fool's joke. He says, I am absolutely thrilled to announce the most exciting news in the history of the collectibles guru, a group of passionate collectors including Elliot Tebow, founder of F. Jerry, have acquired my social media accounts. During the transition of these accounts, Whiteback says he will continue to play an advisory role. He says expect more content, bigger breaking news stories, massive giveaways, and much more. Concerning the collectibles guru, my only... Th- uh, hey, if he actually got real money for his 150000 a uh, follower Twitter account, the price of sports card radio just probably went up two or three yeah, times. Yeah. I know that for a matter of fact, cause I'm, I'm getting paid every day. I actually get, we actually make money on our content. <laughs> Mr. Whiteback has done something like this before. Here he is a 2017 article from the daily mail, man. If you get put in here one day, my sh- my website got put in here. It was like 50,000 views. Anyways, they profiled Mr. Whiteback and his, content surrounding supreme and clothing attire so it looks like he was kind of into clothes and then he went to sports cards and now my guess is he's pivoting to something else you know he'll he'll go into some other niche and you know kind of do the same thing kind of grab some attention and then exit out of it i don't know how he exited out of the clothing thing or if he still does this but what are your thoughts on Mr. Whiteback, who is a controversial figure? I think people more more or less kind of jealous of him. Um, he is accused of taking people's content, like he'll just kind of repurpose a story and claim it as his own. Um, I don't really have too much of a problem with that. I mean, he's gone through our entire web, some pages of our entire website, and just those have been tweets. And the information I know we got off our website because it's the only place where you can get the information. Did he attribute Sports Card Radio? No. Did I lose sleep over it? Absolutely not. So I don't have a problem with how, what he does. There probably needs to be more content like this, kind of breaking news content and following the little drama of the hobby and little news of the companies. What are your thoughts about Mr. Whiteback? Well, as somebody over the past year who has sold a social media account for an undisclosed sum, <clears throat> 200,000, uh, <laughs> uh, I have no problem with this. First of all, if you can, if you can build up a following and uh, sell it, got no problem with that. Uh, it, you know, like you said, uh, he's going to probably pivot over to something else. Whether or not the next guy's Elliot Tebow, F. Jerry. I don't. I don't know if F. Jerry is a. Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know Fire who that Fest, guy is. Yeah. Fire Fire Fest, to yeah. Fire Fest. I mean, these guys will promote anything that is hot, and so they're they're social media uh, kind of guys. And if this is what people want to buy, and they and they think this is positive ROI for them, why the hell not? Um, so. I got no problem with this. Honestly, I also didn't have a problem with this content for how long Ryan, did we go to tops website, Panini's website, download an Excel sheet, download a PDF and copy and paste it on our website and outrank them SEO outrank them for traffic. Have most people rely on sports card radio for the checklist. We did this for years. We did this for years in just a different way. So I actually don't have, have that big of a problem with it. And if you do have a problem with it, you can beat this guy at his own game. I, I I don't actually think he's giving away any of this stuff. He 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 farmed a lot of 
engagement and followers through quote giveaways. D did anybody get a card? Did anybody in the 800 sitting here in chat actually get a card from this guy? How many tweets do we see on a regular basis? Hey, thanks, Eric, for the card. I didn't see a lot of that. I didn't see a lot of people actually get the giveaways. So here's the recipe, guys. Go out there, find the most engaging content you possibly can. Every day, have a, quote, giveaway for a card. Get 90 million retweets. All your other content will get boosted after that. Don't ever give the card away. And in a year or so, which is probably about the time this guy has spent kind of building up his account, you can maybe find some idiot named Elliot Tebel who will buy it. And that's what you do. You can do it here Watch. on YouTube. You can do Watch it on Twitter. Player. Yes. Mr. Whiteback is a part of the sweet PPPE PPP crowd. Mm. His real name, his real name is Ben Haynes. It does appear that he got a sixteen thousand dollar PPP loan for a oh single job business back in 2021 that was forgiven. Again, these loans did not need to be paid back and they were paid for by United States taxpayers. And so when you go to the grocery store and now, you know, a gallon of milk is $8 and 50 cents. You kind of know why. Do you think he got more or less than $16,000 for his Twitter account? I think he got more. I think he got more, but I, I don't think this is, this is not life changing money and life changing money to certain people is a different amount. But my guess is he's going to be able to sit on his butt till the summertime and not have to do a whole lot. But I've seen this guy. This guy has has tweeted pictures of him inside his car. He drives a Subaru. Okay. No offense to people that drive Subarus. Damn, but, shots fired at the Subaru. I'm sorry, Man. but you're not calling if you're buying a, if you're driving a Subaru. I think they're Nobody kind of expensive, aren't they? Expensive. Come on. Brand new? No. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if you think like a forty thousand dollar car is expensive, I don't. I don't. As somebody who's driven cars that are close to six figures on a routinely basis, that's expensive. When your car costs half as much as the house you live in, that's expensive. But no, I, I actually don't think this guy is balling. I actually, I don't, I don't think he's doing that great financially, honestly. Okay. The other information that I had about him is, is we were contacted a, a while back by a major uh, news organization. And they tried to get a hold of Eric Whiteback, and he directed them to a P his PR agency. So this guy did, wouldn't. This guy, if you tried to contact him, would direct you to like he had somebody else kind of managing. So I, I think this is just kind of a bit. This is more or less a business for him. He's not on that. I don't actually think he's the one tweeting this stuff. He's not out there actually caring. He doesn't care about these cards. This is what you see on here. It, people are like, oh, I can't believe he sold his personal account. Guys, his name's not Eric Whiteback. His name's Benjamin yeah, Ben Haynes. Haynes. Okay. So it, this is not, it's not even his real name. And I, I think he actually has a company and it could be a company that he owns or is part owner in. Like what you see here is a complete facade. And this is very common in social media, right? And I, we're not breaking any news. So I can't believe we have 800 strong here. We've got Oakland and Kentucky going down to the wire here. And boy, some brackets are going to be busted. Uh, not to spoil anything, but boy, if you've got Kentucky winning your bracket, uh, probably not going to be looking too good for you. But yeah, this guy, it, it's just a, mar this was just a marketing account. This was not him tweeting on a daily basis. This was not him sharing his love for the hobby. And some guy came and, and bailed him out or offered him a huge amount of money for his site. No, this was all a part of the plan. This was all a part of the plan. Was to farm engagement, do giveaways, which we'll put in air quotes, because I, I don't think he gave anything away. Let's be real. And this, is, this has been common in this hobby since Twitter was started as a website. 
people do giveaways all the time and the thing doesn't get given away. So don't worry about that. But if you have a problem with this guy, just copy it here. He just showed you the blueprint. So, and, and, and we're it. legendary over here at Sports Card Radio for copying and pasting content off a of blowout, copying and pasting content off tops and upper deck and all these websites. Oh boy. Whew. Yeah, bracket buster. Uh, so yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, I would be interested to see what he goes to next. See what he goes to next. Interesting. Does he go to Thoughts Pokemon? Up. Does he go somewhere well, else? Maybe, maybe, maybe goes back to maybe, maybe goes back to clothing. I don't know. Supreme's been played out, so I don't. I don't think it'd be Supreme. Hopefully, he just bangs some chicks occasionally. That's all I hope for. <laughs> so. I want to get your thoughts on CGC acquiring JSA so that they can now authenticate autographs, I guess, similar to Beckett and PSA DNA. What are your thoughts on these CGCs? Probably, I guess. I mean, more consolidation of this industry, and we didn't get a phone call this week. I mean, as the number one media outlet, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. We must be doing something wrong, or we must have missed the, the phone call or the email. Uh, you know, you get a third tier authenticator JSA coming in and getting an offer. Uh, to me, this also shows, uh, if, if you were, if you were doing really well, you wouldn't need to sell your business. You'd, you'd be printing money. Uh, I don't think these guys print as money as, as much as people think they do. And not that James Spence was, you know, struggling financially, but things were probably a lot better a few years ago. So the industry is consolidating and I think it's a good thing. I think it can continues to consolidate and maybe not for the average collector out there, but selfishly over here at sports card radio, the more this industry consolidates, the better it is for us because we're the only ones out here really kind of telling you how it is. The rest of these guys telling you to buy Wander Franco when he gets charged for rape or whatever. All these other guys are going to probably give you the all clear sign on Otani when he might get FBI rated next week. A lot of these guys are like the collectible guru that just want to post tweets that get high engagement and take PPP loans. Jeff Wilson's very similar. So there it is. I'm loving it. You got to go to questions because I can barely move. Wow, damn. You were. <laughs> I'm struggling. Hockey fan 94. Where can I get a ya dip shirt? You might bring that back. Ryan and I were talking merch this weekend. It will be uh, limited. Limited. If we come out with merch, it will be limited, limited, limited. I want to get this. I want to get one of these shirts first. I want to get we'll one definitely of the, get one of those. We'll try to get the one Dr. Those. Collectible shirt. I can help with the merch stuff and Discord. We will do merch, but it'll be very limited. Very, very limited. We don't want to be like these card companies that it's just overproduced. Overproduced. Limited. For limited, sure. limited. Exclusive. Exclusive. Maybe 25, 50 at a time, and you get it or you don't. Thank you, hockey fan, but your dip might be in there. Might have to have a little dip. Oh, my. How did Shine get his dough? Shine got his dough. That powder, that powder uh, still smells really well. I think it was. I think it literally is from from cocaine. The powder. Like I don't, we're we're we're, we're kind of joking, but we're I think we're kind of not. Hey, that's a that's a legitimate business for some people. And right, he hey, we're gonna be hey, shine, we're gonna be at the San Francisco card show <laughs> taking trades, taking all kinds of things. So pull up with your Pelican case and uh you know offer us some merchandise for uh for for some for we can do a transaction, shine. So I, I hope to see you in San Francisco. Yeah, probably be quite popular out there. <laughs> Dr. Collectible, much appreciated. The shirt is for the people, money goes straight to the kids at St. Jude. Shout out I to the cardboard it. life. I love it. Good cause, cool shirt. 
When is Sports Card Radio getting a Discord? I don't know. Discord's got to pay me. I, think, I don't do th- I, I don't do, do things for free. I think uh, we will take the Eric White. If Eric White back had a Discord, we probably should get one so that we can just keep elevating. I think this is true. This I think Discord's true. good for you guys, though. I don't know if I'd ever post to it. That's the problem. Well, just for like to like talk in talk with each other i guess but it could be as good. long as as long as shine comes and joins our if shine says he will join our discord <laughs> we will join a discord absolutely that'd be amazing there'll be a like a little uh there'll be like a little section like a silk road section or <laughs> shine will be the moderator of that It'd be amazing <laughs> bp did these guys use kurt's card care on their domes that now they're now oh. we're talking now we are talking they're looking quite shiny. That's a good business. Philip Fabiani, the loyal $10 coming in. Will Jeff use Kurt's card care juice to restore his PPP application? Try for a third loan. Well, apparently, Jeff, first of all, he dodged a bullet. He was going to pay 100 k for an Otani, and then he has to pay a tax bill. Who knows what that tax bill is for? Man, I tell you what, you get a surprise tax bill in March. You, I, I think you need to. Fi- I, I think you might need to uh, fire your accountant. Because how, how do you not know your tax Real. bill? Uh, how you get surprised by a tax bill in March? You know what I mean? Like how, how are you surprised by that? Like, do you have a CPA, a CFO? Like to me, it's just doesn't make a lot of sense. That yeah, was maybe the year strangest prior. thing of the whole thing. I can understand guys in Canada. Jeff doesn't want to pick it up. It's 100k, one card got turned from a nine to a ten. A lot of weird things about that deal, but get surprised by a hundred K tax bill. I don't know. Something there. Where's Wolf? We talked about CGC buying JSA. Industry is going to continue to consolidate guys with fanatics, basically taking over. It's it's consolidation city. Well, I wouldn't want to have any huge, uh, I wouldn't want to have any huge obligation out there from a company redemption wise or anything like that. Um, Industry next week we're, to consolidate. Next week we're going to be a part of uh fuck Jerry in this uh conglomerate with the collectibles. Exactly. Group, so exactly. C- yeah. Consolidation will continue to happen for sure. Yeah. <laughs> David Snyder with the 499. I went on a jog by the Panini handed quarters in Irving, Texas. Nondescript business park. That's correct. That's true. That's true. Could Panini merge with other local Beckett? fanatics by both potentially i don't think panini's long in this business people are like oh they'll stick around and they'll make caitlin cart cards and they'll they'll make non-licensed stuff no they won't no they won't but it is it is a nondescript business and uh it's an out it's an outsourced manufacturer which you, you run basically from an office park and the employees there they have the iqs of of the office park not not very high CR, what's keeping people in the hobby? Serious question. That's a good question. Uh, um, you know, I think everybody has what they like. I saw that the million cards, million cub collector guy was approaching a million cubs card. So if that's what you there like, you like that. Some people like the vintage stuff. Some people like Vegas Dave, where you buy one or two cards, you pump them up, and then you sell them. Sometimes it's like collectible guru where you just build up your uh, social media account and you sell it. Everybody has their, their own thing. And, and, and CR, this goes for you and a lot of people out there. If you're a little turned off or if there's, some, if there's nothing at the moment in this hobby that makes you very excited, whether it's buying into a break, whether it's buying single cards, whether it's, whether it's going to show or whatever, it's okay to take a break. It's totally okay in this hobby. Just to take a break and and maybe get into something else. I'm constantly doing that. I've been playing a ton of chess. Okay. I wasn't playing this time last year. I didn't know. I didn't care about chess. I didn't do anything with chess. Now I'm playing chess every day. I'm watching chess videos on YouTube. A couple years before that, it was like shooting sports. I was into competition shooting, doing all that. Now I'm playing a lot of golf. Last year I was playing a lot less golf. So if you're burnt out or if there's nothing or if the hobby's just not really lighting your fire, it's okay to t- take a, st- a step to the side 
and return to it at a later time. Maybe, maybe your team, you're a Lakers fan or you're whoever fan and they get an exciting player or they go on a run or whatever it is. You, you get excited about something, t- take that break. I think maybe one of one, a good example, and I don't want to speak for him is our boy Seabless. My boy Seabless is all over the spits right now. I mean, my man is betting bricks in the, the pits. In, in, yeah, man. He's in the sports book. He's in the sports betting big time right now. Now he might be still posting card content, but to me, this dude's like up into the sports betting and, and he was running a 5k, um, little bracket challenge thing. I don't think I'm doing that good. in. one of my, one of my teams got whacked, so I don't think I'm going to win the 5k, but you know, you got a guy like this all up into sport. And I'm not saying he's not all up into sports cards still. He's still loving the sports cards, but man, he's into the sports betting. And so, you know, find what you love and what's getting your juices going. And it can change constantly this time next year. I'm going to have a completely different hobby that I don't have right now. And, and, and I'm sure as you get kids too, they start getting passionate about different stuff. You take that on too. So if the hobby's not not delivering for you, don't feel like you need to give anything back. The ho- the hobby, people act like the hobby is like their child or their wife. You don't have to provide for the hobby. People are always like, oh, sports car radio, is it good or bad for the hobby? Guys, we're not here to provide for the hobby. The hobby is not somebody we provide for, okay? I'll show you. Hey, y- you know, my, my latest hobby is going to be number two. Ooh. What's her name? Kendall, Kendall or, or what's it, Crystal or that, that'll be my new hobby right there. Yeah. You wouldn't have a lot of hobbies if you had that. Believe me, you'd be, it'd be like Louis Vuitton and Couture would be your hobby. Cause that's sounds, what, sounds that's good what to it, me. that around. Sounds good to me. Yeah. That's sounds good to me too. David Snyder would be cautious. Would you be cautious if you find a Rolex at a very high end Dallas antique store? Can you verify with paperwork that it's legit? You can take it. Uh, they should allow you to take it to an, a watchmaker. That's how that uh, paperwork can be faked with Rolexes. Uh, and, and there's unless it's a really, really old one, the paperwork, you can just buy paperwork from another Rolex and pair it with a fake one. And so the paperwork could be real, but the watch could be fake to really know it's a real Rolex. You need to open it up and look at the movement because oftentimes you could have, it could be a real dial. It could be a real case, but the movement's fake or the, the bracelet is real and the case is real, but the movement and the dial have been swapped. Those types of things, especially on an older Rolex, the dials can get swapped. The bracelets can be non-original you just want to be checking on all of that. The only place, the only place to know 110% that you're getting a uh, an authentic Rolex, it is, it is an authentic Rolex authorized dealer, whether it's and shine uh, and shine and shine. True. Shine. If shine pulled up, I would know it's authentic because it, it, you have a little baggie next to it. With, with and if Kurt other. rubbed it, if Kurt rubbed it down too. Fair enough. Fair enough. Could be a fake Rolex, but if it's rubbed by Kirk, no, the Rolex AD would not know, but no, uh, take it to, take it to a, the, the dealer, uh, an antique store should be comfortable with you either sending it to a a watchmaker or something like that. If you are serious about the purchase, that's what I would do. Take it to a watchmaker. You got to open that thing up, make sure the dial is original. The movement's original. If that's all there, then yeah, you've got yourself a nice, nice find. The hobby with cage with the 20 bucks. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the fun content each week. Gentlemen, I appreciate you and the entertainment that you provide. Thank you. The hobby with cage. Appreciate that, my man. Thank you. Looks like maybe he got a little YouTube channel or something. Hobby does a nice job. Yeah, he does a nice job on his channel. Okay. I'm not aware. I've been watching a lot of, ch- I know who Gotham chess is and Hans Neiman, but I don't want been watching a lot of card content in, be- in between, in between your chess videos. Now you can watch the hobby with cage. We'll do. We'll do. I think chess is, uh, I think they should, somebody should make a set. 
the um, you know magnus there we go Ari, you got some you got some stars in chess where if you made some cards of them probably were something maybe that's otani's next move otani's got to go to chess maybe. after getting banned well no MLB. interesting thing is uh there in uh, later in june there's going to be a chess tournament in texas i think kyler murray is going to be there oh i think it's put on Our by boy. amari Co- i think it's actually amari cooper is starting his own chess tour Nice. So, uh, very interesting. Very chess world's very interesting. Got a big boost over the pandemic. There was a cheating scandal as well, which really blew it up. And uh, it's a it's a big uh, chess.com. Oh, did you just did you just say a scandal actually helped propel yes. traffic and indus- and interest into an industry? Did you just say that? Yes. yes. Oh, may I hope I hope out of the seven hundred people watching. Maybe a couple of the hobby positivity crowd just heard that scandals yeah. can actually right. help drive interest right. into this hobby. Very much so. Very much Period. so. Chess, chess has exploded in large part because of a cheating scandal. In fact, I don't think I would have, I, I would be playing chess online if it wasn't for a cheating scandal. Same thing with poker. Like a year or two ago, you had the Robbie and 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 uh, Robbie and Gary, the other guy. Like that blew up. It didn't blow up poker, but it was like like that was big. That made the L.A. Times and stuff. Scandal is not is not a bad thing. Scandal is is. I mean, that's what we watch on TV a lot of times, right? Like we watch scandalous type stuff. Mm-hmm. The Kardashians, popular in some ways, mm-hmm. because obviously attractive but also can be involved in some scandalous stuff the subaru whiteback yeah he he was driving a subaru (laughs) i don't know how i I, like i don't know i just don't have a lot of and this is not a i we got like you know i'm amazed we have as many people watching tonight as we do with the ncaa tournament on and things like that but with the, the amount of people that we have watching, it's it's no offense, but if you drive a Subaru, I just question how much money you have. Wow, I'm sorry, I'm God sorry. Damn, I'm Dude, just, you're acting you're 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 acting like it's some 1980s like Ford Pinto. Bro, it's a Subaru. Or, or G- it's a Subaru. It's you not a Chevy me. Volt. You it's would, not a hey, you wouldn't Prius. catch me getting in either of those cars. It's wouldn't not a Toyota, a Toyota Yaris. You wouldn't catch me dead in a Toyota. Car. Wouldn't catch me dead in a Toyota. Wouldn't catch me dead in a. And the only reason why I'm driving Tesla okay, is. Okay, because... hold on, hold on, hold on. The dude is, first of all, he's only 26, or no, 27, 28 years old. What the hell kind of car were you driving at 27 and 28? Did you even I have a car at 26? I, I had a Mercedes when I was 26, 27. It was my, oh my God. Yeah, but yeah, I was, exactly. it was a Mercedes. <laughs> it was 30 years old. So and it was you were driving around in a 1972 diesel Mercedes. That was actually really nice, actually, to be it honest. Nice but, nice. and you're clowning on this guy for having a Subaru at the same age. That's all I'm saying. Uh, at the time, I was not. I was not acting like. Uh, I first of all, I didn't have a PPP loan that I had gotten. Oh, okay, that's true. That good point. So I didn't get that, a, that's a multi-thousand-dollar good... PPP loan. Fair point. Fair I point. I didn't. You weren't in the uh, death. I did fifty thousand and close. Sp- uh, yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm a supreme guru. I'm a collectibles guru. I wasn't saying that at the time. I was telling. If you actually, I have podcasts that date back to that time. I was telling people I was broke. I was telling people I was struggling financially. I told people about the Mercedes that I was driving that would barely run when it was under 60 degrees outside. I told people this. I was honest about it. I think what we get from a lot of these influencers is a complete lie and a complete sham. That's all I think. And if you're the collectible guru... No wonder you're driving a Subaru. No wonder you got to sell your social media account. No wonder you got to sell it. I think if it was making, if it was making money, he wouldn't have sold it. But that's my opinion. I don't think it made any money. And I'm not, I'm not convinced that 
they paid any money for this. Like a hundred, fuck Jerry, like a hundred fifty, uh, 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 an account with a hundred fifty thousand followers. That's nothing. And you might but have maybe not- include some Instagram stuff, but you're not making, eh, you're not making a whole lot. Maybe Panini's writing checks. Maybe some of these other companies are writing them checks. And so he's got some monthly income to like whatever engagement. But I, I'm not, I'm not convinced, not convinced, not convinced. He's driving well, he can, a Subaru, driving a Subaru. Well, he, and well, and, and where, where in the Supreme, he can just go to the next grift, either video games or whatever it is, cars, sure, whatever, yeah. women, whatever. Finance. Yeah. I don't, I, I kind of want to know where he's going next. We'll find out. I'm sure. I, I kind of want to know where he's going. Bob Boozle has a request, Ryan. Shirts in yes. uh, sequential XL, five X's. I think that is, so they can fit fish and yeah, fish. Well, he slimmed down a little okay. bit. He's looking okay. Looks we're gonna fine. we're gonna have the big and tall selection. Yeah, we're gonna have the five, yeah. six, seven XL because yeah. because when you go to the national, I mean, it's everybody. I mean, it, literally, that's the one size we've got to carry. I mean, is is quad five XL. I mean, we've got to be able to fit the hobby. Yeah. We're for the hobby. Yeah. So, yeah, we need Bob no Boozle. I agree. Look, I ain't, I ain't the a skinny guy either. So, but I mean, I'm not 5X, but I like my shirts to be, you know, little room left. I'm, I'm past my tight shirt days, unlike Shine there. Hey, pants. I think it would have been amazing if shirt, uh, Shine was just shirtless or like he had just that jacket on and no shirt underneath. That would be incredible. Just I think if there was like some white powder that you, you could see, like some white powder. <laughs> well, right maybe there, if you zoom in a little bit. If I zoom in, yeah, okay, yeah, maybe. Like just look at his, look under his nose, like residue. Um, yeah, cocaine yeah. residue everywhere. Something. Yeah, <laughs> he definitely looks looks laid back there. <laughs> laid very laid back. So. Well, it is seven o'clock. I think we wanted to wrap this one up because uh, Ryan's back is hurting. We are being at a card show very soon. Do we have anything that we were bidding on? I watched a ton of stuff. I have so much fun going through these auctions. I've been on eBay, been buying Brock Purdy cards. You told me to buy Brock Purdy cards. I think I've bought 30 of them over the last three days. So I've got a ton of them coming in. Uh, Other 49er lots, been buying other 49er stuff. I don't think there was a lot of like really, really exciting stuff in terms of the daily auction, but you had that elite auction that I think ends in another week, man. I went through that whole thing. I mean, yeah, the Kobe Bryant ring on top. That's kind of interesting. That's not really, it's like a, there was other rings in this too, that I, that I thought were kind of interesting, like salesman sample rings. I thought that was kind of cool. You got a bunch of like game use stuff that mm. I might be a player on i think there was on blowout that tiger woods up there was maybe allegedly trimmed i think ai sports did a video on that so you got to be careful got to be careful you got these auctions on here there's a lot of cool stuff but you got to be careful got to be careful oh i would always check the the serial number check the blow i think that one and again this is a legend but i think that one could be could be trimmed trim. and there was some tiger game you stuff there was like that hat that was directly from upper deck so that was kind of cool so you got to be careful a little bit of the stuff but we got a couple of weeks from the masters tigers playing so that could be that could be an interesting could see a boost there and uh yeah there's some some tiger stuff in this one so might be a player on some of this stuff and a lead auction you think oh i gotta have tens of thousands of bucks there's a lot of stuff in here where some of this stuff might might go for kind of cheap, honestly. Mm-hmm. Just some different stuff. Obviously, the cards are going to go for full market because people are paying like 110% comps for everything these days. Um, but some of this other stuff, maybe not. So, did you win anything this week or no? We had one I more was not- donation, by the way. Oh, okay. oh read that one. Let me refresh here. Ooh. Can you provide a scandal for my channel, Dirty Bird Shades? That <laughs> just yeah, yeah, just watch Sports Card Radio and yeah, just actually I could just 
I can just forward you all the emails that I get <laughs> and you, yeah, you can like just pick one through 10, hours. which, yeah. Which yeah. scandal do you want to cover BGS? Right. You know, do you want to cover grading? Do you want to cover Panini? Do you want to cover fanatics? Yeah. I mean, it is unbelievable. The amount of, I we mean, it is a like, a, a it's a, it's like a customer service hotline over at sports card radio. I mean, we get all totally. the dirt on, on all the companies. Yeah. So, uh, what I like to see too, is I saw a couple channels. I was around uh, YouTube and, and, and channels will just like straight take four minutes of our video and put it in their video. Like I, I don't mind, like, like people get pissed at Eric white back and stuff like this. It's like, I don't mind if you can build your channel and your following on our backs. Please do that. Please, please do that. Please do that. And it is it is our pleasure for you to do that. Well, Use our enjoy. content and try to make money. Be happy to happy for that. But folks, we will be back next Thursday. If you're in the San Francisco area, Daily City in particular. Come buy, sell, and trade with Sports Card Radio. Apparently, 400 tables. I think you got Patrick Willis, Ricky Henderson, Frank Gore, uh, Roger, Craig. Roger Craig, Webb. Logan Webb. I can't remember his first name. Logan, um, Logan Webb, pitcher for the Giants. Going to be signing over the weekend. We will be there. Come sell us your car. I think this is going to be one of these shows where a lot of our low end stuff's not going to sell. We're not even going to bring it. This is like, you got to pay for parking. You got to pay to get in. This is going to be like the Pelican case show. And so there's going to be a bunch of guys there looking to sell and the cleaners. I'll have some cash. I'll have the Louie bag and there'll be some cash in it. And uh, we'll be looking to buy, sell or trade. If you're in the area, feel free to come by. If you want to hang out afterwards, maybe we'll go to dinner Friday, Saturday night. Let us shine, know. shine, come shine, through. Please. Shine. shine. Hold on, Ryan. Forget. Shine. We have somebody else that we invite before. Yes. My bad. Number two. What's her name? Kylie. Kelly. Kendall. Uh, Kendall. Maybe. Kendall. Uh, she is first on the list. If she was in the San Francisco area, it would be a quick dinner. Let's just put it that way. Stop. We can go to dinner, hit Louie, and then, you know, do the rest. So, yeah, if you're in the San Francisco area, even all the way down in Mountain View, California, hit us up. We will be there all weekend long. Folks, we'll be back next Thursday. I'll be posting a video from the show as well on the Clips channel. Make sure you're subscribed to that and the main channel here on Sports Card Radio. We'll see if Otani's put in jail this time next week. Ooh. Who goes to jail first, Wander Franco or Shohei Otani? If you would have said that Ooh. six months ago, <laughs> that Wander Franco and Otani could both be behind bars, wow. that would have shocked the world. We'll shock the world again, just like Oakland shocked a lot of people's brackets. Oh. As a number one seat. Has been oh I think it was one seed, the seed that Oakland. people had going the whole way is go. Oh. Luckily, I did not have them winning a lot of my brackets. So we'll be back some other time, some other place. If we are bought out next week from either F Jerry, Michael Rubin, Kylie Jenner, SGC, PSA, Collectors, Ken Golden, Brian Gray. Panini America, Tops, Fanatics, whoever it is. If we are bought out and sell out before next week, guys, it's been fun. We love yeah. you. And Tim will be you collecting got a $5 down payment from there it is. City Mike for uh, using your content. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's incredible. That's not, that that's not even necessary. So that's like that's like a gratuity jar right there. So you can just take you can take our content for free and, and repurpose it however you want. Yes, you can. Use it all you want. We won't copyright strike you. You can even make fun of us and say I disagree with these guys. That's a good those are good videos too. Like sports card radio is an idiot. You get a lot of clicks on that. Publicity. Do what you a lot, need to do. A lot of truth. Yeah, there's some truth there. Make that money. Get that paper. 
And until next time, if we are not bought out, we will be back next Thursday. If we are bought out, cheers. And we'll see you next time. What's going on with that PPP? You done a lot of talking, not a lot to see. Up in the millions like 2.3. But Jeff got it all getting off scot free. Trying to talk tips like we talking about stock. But you're talking about men printed on call stock. When you open your mouth, I take it with a grain of salt. Cause the market's down and you're a clown, it's all your fault. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruin the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson Did you dip Jeff? I think you dip Jeff What you talking about? I don't think you dip yet Willie's doing shady shit like the G.O.B.'s Like his whole failed thing with them NFTs Taking money from the people to pay Most of them are broke, but that's okay He's getting money, even better tax free Loving all the stimulus from PPP You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit What's going on with that PPP? You done a lot of talking, not a lot to see. Up in the millions like 2.3. But Jeff got it all getting off scot free. Trying to talk tips like we talking about stock. But you're talking about men printed on cause stock. When you open your mouth, I take it with a grain of salt. Cause the market's down and you're a clown, it's all your fault. You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson. You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit. Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson Did you dip Jeff? I think you dip Jeff What you talking about? I don't think you dip yet Willie's doing shady shit like the G.O.B.'s Like his whole failed thing with them NFTs Taking money from the people to pay Most of them are broke, but that's okay He's getting money, even better tax free Loving all the stimulus from PPP You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson You ruined the hobby I love with your bullshit Peace out.